Welcome back, Zero K fan, to another expedition match. This is Aquanim vs. Exploit on Sapphire Shores Dry. I remain Shadow Free 3 your commentator. I forgot to mention that earlier. But yeah, that, that's who I am. So just bear that in mind. Tell your friends. I don't know. Why not? Tell them about the channel. They'll watch too. They might enjoy it. Anyway, gonna get on with this on Sapphire Shores Dry. Let's go. Exploit the northeast side of the map. Or Sorry, the west, the east of the map, center actually. Going for hovercraft. Well, Aquanim and the west side of the map going for cloakies. And yes, this is a rather long map. One of the longest maps that's played in 1v1 at all. It's a fairly large map overall, really. So Aquanim going for quite a few glaives right off the bat. And Caretaker off the bat. This is rather bizarre. We saw Aquanim actually in the 2v2 tournament, paired with Google Frog. They did all right, although Aquanim is mostly going for air stars, so it's kind of hard to see exactly what they were doing, how they played. While Exploit, on the other hand, we've seen them, seen them a few times on this cast of their games a few times, but not too often. Anyway, Exploit is setting up. Well, he's got... They've got... Oh, damn, I keep doing, keep doing that. Uh, old habits die hard, I suppose. Anyway, Aquanim still going for more metal. Ah, that's what the character is for. Reclaim! Reclaiming all of these crystals, because each of these crystals... Not a whole lot of metal individually, but hey, still a fair amount. Quite a lot of power, though. Huge amount of power in there, so that's an extra 10 metal and, pow and power for... Quite, no, 10 metal. Never mind. Not 10 metal, but it is pretty much that much in energy. So I can be going heavy for reclaim, while Exploit, on the other hand, is not. Not even trying to reclaim, not even bothering. Their crystals are further away from the start location, and now we have a meetup. I can be coming in here with their glaives dealing with exploit's forces pretty effectively while well, exploit on the other hand is yeah they're losing most of their scrubber their daggers glaive's doing pretty actually no the last dagger is doing a pretty good job kiting the last glaive for aquanim not especially well though and exploit about to lose that dagger as well so aquanim definitely getting ahead here one dagger however is managing to get past We'll find Aquanim's commander and we'll basically go down right away. Because one dagger can't kill a commander. Five or six daggers? Yes, definitely. But one dagger? No. Not gonna work. That is... Well, that's that. I mean, Exploit's pretty heavily locked up in their base right now. Aquanim, on the other hand, pretty much has got map control thanks to those glaives. A few more glaives in the back, but yeah, Aquanim basically can just do whatever they want. You know, the fact that Exploit's commander is going to be not really possible to kill at this point by the Glaze, but still. Aquanim basically has this. Or at least, looks like they do. I mean, Exploit sort of goes. And yeah, no, what does Exploit even have going for them? More daggers. Not really much else. So, a bunch of daggers. I mean, it's not really. It's maces. That would work pretty well as a riot. That, that is the Hovercraft Riot unit. But it's also quite. It's also 400 metal compared to 85 for the daggers. So Aquanim just gonna have to deal with more and more daggers, but that's fine. Aquanim can deal with those just fine. Exploit, on the other hand, still having a hard time dealing with the glaives. I don't think Aquanim's gonna switch off of glaives anytime soon. Given the size of the map, the raiding phase will likely last the entire game. It's usually what happens. I mean, sometimes it gets really long in. You get Striders, you get Dantes. We've seen that one time. But normally, on a map this large, it takes a very long time to get out of the raider phase. Just because they're fast enough to actually traverse the entire map. However, Exploit just now getting rid of all the glaives in front of their base. Oh, there's a couple more left, but still enough daggers to get through that as well. Exploit could actually go in for a counterattack. Not a particularly successful one, mind you, given that Aquanim has quite a few defenses around. Even the defenders... Well, actually, that that might work. No, the daggers would die. Two shots from a defender would kill them. Still, it's worth scouting at any rate. Just that Exploit knows what's going on, because Exploit has really no idea what's happening. I mean, Exploit knows what's going on on their side of the map, and Aquanim, same thing for their own side. But otherwise, no, neither player really knows what the other is exactly up to. One of the tricky things in maps this large is scouting becomes rather difficult to do. Anyway, Exploit going along the south with the daggers, avoiding Aquanim's glaives, and will be running straight into Aquanim's defenders. And those defenders will get rid of the daggers without too much issue. The daggers might kill the defenders in time, but I doubt it. 
Between the two defenders, no, between the two defenders, that's not happening. The only hope is possibly overkill off of one of the defenders, but really with a pair of defenders there, that won't work, unfortunately. So there's not much more to be said about that. Those daggers are going to die. Actually, they might even die to the glaze before they attack. But no, one of the daggers coming in here, and yeah, it's not going to last. There we go. It goes down, and the other dagger also goes down. So exploit really in a bad spot right now. Not entirely sure why it went hovercrafts. I think he didn't realize that this was a dry version of the map, because there is a map. This map does have a version with water inside it. We are not we are not showing this map. They are not playing on that map. They were playing on the map without the water, which gives hovercrafts less of an advantage. Because the map with water, you would basically just go hovercrafts or maybe amphibs, and not cloaky at all. But the dry version, you would go cloaky because it's got a fast raider. It's able to go around pretty quickly, and this is fairly cheap. The raider, that is. However, hovercrafts are what's being used for exploit, and they're having a bit of a tough time getting up this ramp here. And then, of course, again, a really have a tough time getting up the next ramp, thanks to the defenders. Same with the north side ramp. There's really no easy way to get in here, other than switching over to scalpel or mace. And given how long it would take to get across the map with those, still, scalpel is coming up. We do have a scalpel being built up for exploit. Exploit about to lose all their daggers here, trying to get rid of as many glaives as possible, but not really able to do that. Unfortunately for them, and no, that is not going to happen. Will or wait, will it? Nope. No, it won't. Oh, wait. Maybe it will. Maybe they just will get lucky. Maybe the right positioning will do it. Seems like they'll hover glaives coming in the southeast. And those southeast glaives tearing apart exploits. Actually, I don't think exploit has any easy way out of this. These glaives are going to tear apart the entire southeast economy. While the remaining glaives just harassing a few daggers here. But the real problem is this southeast set of glaives, which will destroy the entire economy of exploit on the southeast side. Right as exploit is setting up another character to take advantage of said economy. Well, that is pretty horrible for them. Gotta say. Exploit coming in here. Yeah, he's got those daggers, but not gonna do too much. And Aquidim now setting up at the center of the map. Has had Glaze around the center of the map for most of the game, but setting up ultimately the center of the map to finish everything off. Just to get that much more map control, that much more economy. Aquidim is really ahead right now. That's all that really needs to be said. Aquidim is very much ahead. Between overdrive and just high energy and lots of metal spots, Aquanum basically has this game. If Exploit gets lucky with a few maces, gets rid of all these glaives and pushes in, they might have a chance, but that's not likely. That's really going to be hard to pull off. Which is rather unfortunate for Explo for Aquanum, rather, but oh well. That's just how it goes, I guess. So this is another couple of daggers going down, seeing what Aquanum's up to, and Aquanum's still up to daggers. And Exploit not switching off two maces. Getting halberds on top. Oh, there we go. Never mind. Never mind. Maces are being built up. We do have maces added to the queue. And a few scalpels as well. Actually, three scalpels already. Three scalpels, a couple halberds, and... Oh, three halberds. And a bunch of daggers. Nine daggers. Two of which are going over to the northwest. Won't well, last, mind you, but they are going over there. Gonna try. The rest of them are just staying... Up here. In a group with the scalpels. And the maces have started being built. They are not in repeat build, though. That really should happen. At least for a little while. Given how many glaives there are, how many glaives Akinem has built. But that doesn't appear to be happening anytime soon. And more glaives along the southeast side. Tearing apart the attempt to rebuild that economy and moving into the main base. They might even take out the caretakers. If Akinem moves north, he, they only have this one chance. They have to move north now. But if they get rid of the caretakers, that will be huge. I don't know if they're going to do that, though. It's kind of hard to say. Are they going to do it? Yeah, no, no they aren't. They are not. Akuna moves back a bit too timid with that. He, they could have just taken out the entire set of caretakers. Or they could move in with forces from the front. Now that the backside is where all of Akuna's, sorry, all of Exploits' forces have gone, Akuna could attack along the front. Looks like they're planning on doing exactly that with these eight glaives. Looks like these eight glaives are planning on going all the way over here and then attacking from there. But I don't know if that's going to happen right away. Aquanum seems a little bit hesitant. At the same time, Exploit coming in along the south side, being forced to move back as a result of not having enough firepower to deal with this. Which is rather unfortunate for Exploit. I mean, Exploit, where are his maces? He's got to have a few around here somewhere. He's got a couple, still only has two, and they are... 
Where are they? Okay, they're back here. They're moving in, but still, it's just... Aquinum has actually a smaller army, but a slightly smaller army by cost, but of course, the problem being that a lot of exploits army involves units that either don't do a whole lot of damage or a very low fire rate. So Aquinum can just run circles around them, dodge all their attacks, and then kill them from there. Although it looks like there might be enough daggers that won't matter. Still, too many glaives coming in, too much of an economy. I mean, Aquinum not that much ahead, surprisingly enough, but exploit still doesn't have the map control. Aquinum probably just about to convert. Getting into Brawlers, actually, that's where all his money's going into. Getting into Brawlers. So Aquinum's forces will soon be outdoing exploits, although exploit does have, he has hovercraft, or they are playing hovercrafts. They will have a pretty good chance of actually getting flails. If they get flails once they need to, that will help out a lot. Flails are very powerful against gunships. And a penetrator up as well. Yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. I don't see how X was going to be able to pull this off. Might be able to, but it's going to be very difficult. Same time, northwest attack with those eight glaives. A little bit later than I expected, but still happens nonetheless. And more halberds, no, more maces coming in. No halberds here, maces and scalpels only. Oh, the maces do not have the range. Oh, no, they do just barely have the range to kill the defenders and the radar and the last few defenders here. So that southwest hill being taken out. Are the maces a little bit out of position to deal with these glaives? One of them is in position, but the rest of the glaze should be able to get past it. Should be able to kill it and then kill the penetrator right after. The last the penetrator will get one more shot off before that happens. There we go. All but one glaive goes down. That last glaive will finish off the penetrator. That that sucks. That sucks a lot for exploit. And a thousand metal worth of penetrator gets killed by a glaive. Really, what it was meant to do was to, to tear down this entire wall here, but nope, that's not happening. So, Aquinum, once again, has a bit of an advantage on control, and quite a lot of an advantage on economy. 50 to 32, my goodness, that is a huge economic advantage. I don't really see how Exploit's going to be able to get out of this, honestly. Or at least I didn't. Never mind. You know what? No, I just I keep saying that mindlessly, because actually, Exploit does have a pretty decent chance with the maces. I mean, the maces and scalpels. The glaive's getting quite clumped up. The scalpels, the scalpel splash damage can deal with them somewhat. And the maces, of course, are maces, but even then, not enough maces, unfortunately. Exploit does not have enough units to deal with Aquinum's units, and Aquinum, with the economic advantage, now with also three brawlers in play, this is not going to go well for Exploit. Exploit still has a bit of a chance, but it's tough. However, having taken out the southwest, southwest position has been destroyed. The north, sorry, not the southwest, the south center position, the north center position still secured, but at least there is that south opening that Exploit can go through. But even with it, there's just so many glaives that Aquinum has that Exploit can't deal with them. And Exploit doesn't have enough maces to actually destroy all of them quickly enough. And maces, even then, while pretty good riot units, they can get overwhelmed like any other. The thing is, enough raiders will kill the riot units. Not a hard counter. Raiders, in large enough numbers, will kill the riot units, but it's not good for cost. However, because Exploit is going for a rather mixed force that doesn't work especially well against raiders, it's not working out as well as he'd like, or they'd like. Going back to daggers too. Hmm. Interesting choice. Not going to be especially effective. More scalpels getting rid of the glaives. A few glaives here and there, but I mean, look at this. There's 20 metal worth of, or 20 metal worth of glaives being poured, or 20 metal per second poured in the Kogula factory for glaives. Or 40 metal poured into the gunship factory for brawlers. And these three brawlers, sorry, five brawlers, whoops, my mistake. There are indeed five brawlers, one of those behind the cloud here of nanites. Five brawlers are currently in play. None of them have actually been used yet, but they likely soon will be. And Glaive's going around, Aquinum attacking from all sides. Exploit can't easily defend against this. Exploit does have quite a uh, decent army, but. No, Akinum's just overwhelming him. Akinum's getting more and more forces over time. Which is how it goes when you have an economic advantage. Given the amount of raiding that Akinum has done, the amount of successful raiding Akinum has done, it's no surprise. Exploit really couldn't have outdone that. Although Exploit could have set up more defenses around the map just to avoid that raiding. And now, they've finally done so with the Lotuses, but it's too little too late. You know, it's two successful raids on the metal, and one really successful raid on the energy economy of the southeast side of the map. Exploit just has not had very good economy this entire game. And Aquinum now moving on to getting 
10,000 metal worth of units. And moving into the Brawlers, there we go, the Brawlers finally attack. Oh, eight Brawlers and 48 Glaives, my goodness. That is quite the army there that, ex that exploit has. And Aquanim, no flails, bunch of daggers, no flails, not even prepared for this at all, just getting 100 daggers, trying to push all of their metal into daggers. While Aquanim reclaiming, or trying to reclaim more of these crystals. But it's not enough, and the Brawlers move in to tear apart everything with the Glaives alongside, just for extra support. And pretty much all of Exploit's army is going to go down. Exploit will likely switch right now to Flails. Yes, he has. Which, sorry, they have. Switched very directly to Flails. This is... This is not going to last too much longer. Exploit will get a few more Flails. These Brawlers... They should actually fall pretty quickly to Flails. I mean, there's already two so far. Another third one coming in here. They're taking about 10 seconds to build up. So, the Brawlers... No, not even. It's five seconds to build up. The Brawler's days are numbered, but at the same time, Exploit has lost pretty much their entire army. Yeah, this is their entire army. That's all that's left other than the Flails. And the Flails, there are five of them. But the Brawlers are coming in, and one of the Brawlers is about to go down. The Flails are coming in. About to take out that Brawler. Still another five Brawlers behind it, and more Brawlers being constructed very quickly behind that. The Flails are not doing enough, and the Brawlers don't even care if they get killed. Not even going for just not even going to the flails, just going around, tearing apart the economy over in the southeast, although admittedly not caring about being destroyed might be a bad idea. But still going for the economy in the southeast, taking that all to pieces. Exploit losing that once again. Despite the defenses losing the southeast economy. And losing his their commander. Down goes Exploit's commander, trying to reclaim the crystals. Realizing that was a good idea, but unfortunately not able to do it in time. And Aquanim just pouring in with Glaives and Brawlers. We'll be able to finish this off in a very short amount of time. Though admittedly, not bad anti-air to set up right now for exploit. Between the Flails and the Scalpels. But now let's switch over to Flails. Those Glaives can do a wonderful job. And Black Dawn as well came in just for good measure. Black Dawn and Brawler. And now a few Cranes because why not? Rebuilding the rest of the map. So yeah, Glaives coming along here from the Cloakabot Factory. The Glaives being set up, and there's 64 of them. With all the Flails in play, it's going to be rather difficult for them to do anything to those Glaives. Those Glaives, I mean, the Flails tear apart the entire Air Force. Pretty much one shot anything at this point, but... And the Black Dawn's about to go down. This Brawler's about to go down to the next missile. There it goes. Down it goes. Yeah, not much more can be really said about that, because the Glaives are going to move in, and now at this point, the 68 Glaives. More coming in. It's just every couple seconds, Glaives are coming in. And Glaive's coming along the northeast, tearing that apart pretty effectively, though admittedly it's not... Aquanim's not paying the most attention to the northeast. They are paying some attention to the center, but even then the Brawler's about to go down, another Brawler down. Doesn't matter all that much because Aquanim can just keep spamming them out, no problem. And here we go, southeast side of the map. Quite a few Glaives moving in here, 30 Glaives moving in to tear apart everything else, just to finish this off. Just need to move north, get rid of the characters, get rid of the factory, and that will be game. Exploit will throw in the towel. And Aquanim will take it. Glaives just need to finish it off. Just need to tear it apart. There it goes. Get one caretaker's down. Another melee strike down. Another caretaker down. And the last caretaker goes down as well. Thanks to the explosion of the caretaker. And the factory, as soon as that goes down, should probably finish it. At this point, Exploit didn't even need the caretakers. They weren't doing them any good. But it doesn't work out. Not with that set of Glaives. The next set of Glaives moving in. 22 Glaives are coming in here to finish off the that factory. Finish off the daggers. And doesn't matter, exploit self-destructs, throws in the towel, without even a GG, and that is game. Hope you enjoyed that. That is going to be it for me tonight. Thank you all for watching, everyone, and have a good night.